So, you want to know how to unify Japan fast as Shimatsu with no allies and no corruption and have an amazing opener for a colonial Japan game? Then this guide is just for you. Today, Shimatsu. Iron Man, I will call it purple. Let's start with the most beloved part. Let's start with the estate. Remove the crown land, take a mission. Base production is always good. Take that, it's basically free money, and I got it very often. If you go into your capital city, put in the development edict, you can actually do it day one. The mission is done, we actually get a little bit of money now. We can remove this later, but for now, that's just some nice extra money. Next, the religious estates. We take religious state, we take religious culture, and we take religious diplomats. Over to the nobility, we won again, take the extra mana point, and we take supremacy over the crown. That's it, we don't need more. And with the merchants, we take land of commerce, and we take patronage of the arts. We don't take burger loans yet. Loans are at the moment 5 ducats, which is worth nothing. So we would get 25 ducats in burger loans, which is nothing. So we keep them around for later. What we're gonna do, military-wise, is build the free company because the free company is just nice and yeah that's pretty much the day one thing one more thing i will do just to drag out a little bit of the support stuff is to keep high relations with the emperor for a while it will not work forever but it buys me some time so you're an opm in japan right and you need to call all of this and also increase your stability because it has nice effects take the admin focus please take it i love mill focuses and your leader is not too bad mill wise but take the admin focus and this time around i will not get rid of our heir because he's like four years away from being of age even if i get to poke it in a few years he should be old enough to rule let's wait for one month to pass because we all know on the 11th of december we can declare wars in this game we have now reached the 11th of december and i will check the alliances this is a weird alliance and they have no alliance okay so this is a very easy target probably attack him just because of the lack of alliances before i'll do that though i will make rivals one thing people said in the comments last time and i tried to put it in this guide is show strength wars to gain some admin points or actually just gain points in all categories if you can get it into your run do it but i personally don't have the time to do it because i'm so fixated on expansion and show strength war would basically give me a truce with a nation that i want to annex so yeah that's why i'm not doing it in this run war go and he's actually kind enough to walk into me by the way don't forget Roll generals <laughs> remembered myself last second i will see what i can get the best one by far is my ruler just be careful when you get the poker that is not in a battle or in siege otherwise you will lose two stability and you don't want that he will walk into me and he's gone i lost 228 men and he lost 2000 yeah that's that's good <laughs> i'll take that and i'll put the siege leader on the mercs because they will siege as long as this is going on i'm gonna pump up my infantry a little bit more with normal manpower because later on we will need to siege a fort over here and for that we need a bigger army by the way Something I forgot to mention is that you actually have a reconquest war here. If you look on the map, you start with a core on this uh, daimyo. So the war against him is basically a no AE war. Because I was surprised the first time I saw this is actually start with a core. Take the reconquest war if you take that because it's just so good. You get no AE at all. That's actually a good thing about being on the other side of Japan. The coalitions will start less early because you are further away from everyone else. They will still start early enough. Trust me, they will still be under a lot of pressure with that. But it will be less dramatic. I will also get myself an admiral. Yeah, not too good. But you know, better than nothing. So, the siege is over. Could actually try to fight this for a little bit of naval XP. So, let's see. And we actually won. Yeah, I will take everything. And it will put me on the naughty list. So, yeah. But I need to expand. We are now in the danger of being supported. Because we have annexed someone. At the same time, we are actually good with the emperors. Okay, I will declare this war next. This kind of will be a war for naval dominance. Because this brings me also to war with So. And getting rid of So early on is actually quite nice. Co belligerent. Go. I will start building a few galleys. Just for the naval dominance later on. Okay, once again, naval battle. Let's see how we perform. He has a galley more than me, so I'm gonna be very careful about this. As soon as I see I turn red, I will just evacuate. Galleys are built very fast. That's quite nice. Oh, by the way, before people will complain, because last time I didn't do it. I will put my merchant over here for some extra money. Because, we you know, I would go bankrupt without that 0 0.01 trade income in China. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you're happy now. I will go to the next war. I'm just counting on them being busy over here very soon and being able to stack wipe them right now. Yeah, it should be an easy war. Basically, you, you never want to peace out an age with a truce, right? Like, you want to completely annex him. But in this scenario, it is so early on and he's kind of so far away from me that I could do it and just expand around him or just declare war on one of his allies and not co him, but still annex him. Because at that point in the game, I don't care about coalitions anymore. And he has only two provinces, so that's an easy annexation. 
Okay, with my second Kellen Yardana, I will actually try to go for full naval supremacy by attacking their navy now. That should absolutely be fine. Okay, so this is okay. This is just free naval experience. So we gain per battle 1.8, which is not a lot. He gains more because he lost. But in the long run, this could be actually very good. So he engages with me now. Two galleys. I should just shred at him. Oh no, okay, now he got some more navies. I always keep an eye on you. Like, uh, the trick I used in the France video once again. Naval side. This is my side. This is his side. And I'm basically just trying to get his ships damaged and killed while mine survive. Every time I see one of mine turning red, I just go away. That's just so easy with navy. I'll try to do some more damage here. He's at least running away, which is good. Okay, my ships are actually still very much fully repaired. So let's go into here. And we kill one of his galleys. Two of his galleys. Yeah, two galleys. He only has light ships and transport ships now. I feel like we're kind of naval dominance now. At least in this war. That, that's a big difference to order. I have to do a lot of naval play now with this nation. Because I am on this island. And I do have to do naval landing. So, transport ship has been built. Now we're going to do a little bit of a gamble and try to land in. So, okay. I have three more shock. I lose two pips for landing. I have a discipline advisor. But he's very expensive, so I'm not going to get him. We should just have this one in the bag. Because if you look at his ideas, he has trade efficiency and trade steering. And I haven't talked about our ideas. Our ideas are amazing. <laughs> Maybe I should talk about the nation first that I play here. Yeah. But we have infantry combat ability and we have yearly army tradition decay, which just means we gain a lot of army tradition, probably up to 100 while this Japan war is going on. And going on, you just have more military stuff at the beginning. Goes over to a little bit of production, which a little bit is good. 10% is a lot. Play like a lot of stuff for trade and for um, military, right? Even a little bit of research. But we start with 10% infantry combat ability, which is the important part now, which is the boost we need to kill him. And on the other side, we also have the six shock general. Let's see the roll. He has a zero. That's very good. That's equal. Yeah, so far. Yeah, we, 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 we won. Okay, good. Problem is I don't have enough to siege now because they died. I'm gonna get a little bit more infantry now and maybe prepare a war in my head against Archie already because they have no allies. Okay, that's actually a good plan though. Siege starts now. Let's hope it doesn't take too long because my money is going down. And we get admin tech. Do I want this? Hmm. I'll need it for coring. On the other side, I will never get a chance to click this again. So I'm actually gonna take the first admin tech. The effects are really nice. Yeah, my siege leader just died. <laughs> I thought the siege was done, but nope, he died. So, siege is done after 611 days. Let's see. I'm gonna wait this naval battle out, cause experience. Wow, okay, yeah, they have the fleet of Archie helped me. Interesting, okay, good. I will separate piece them, and believe me, it's so hard to click this island. Oh my god, I can't even right click it. I'm just gonna do this. Bam, let's take this. Let's take this. And that's that. And now I will land this troops back on the mainland again. Let's see how the Emperor reacts to this. He still loves me a lot. That's good. So he won't support me just yet. And yeah, we're at the loan limit. So good thing I paused here. Because of course, every time you end a war, your loans reshuffle and I have a new loan limit now. My new loan limit is exactly on point, 22. Okay, I will repay some of those very early loans just to shuffle them a little bit. I can now take 17 loans. It's just a very small shuffle just to get the, this a little bit under control, right? I will declare the next war now so we can start sieging this fort. This is very much needed, otherwise we take way too long here. Bankruptcy is looming. I'm going to take all the loans I can. I will repay as much as I can. I can have 22 loans now, and as fast as I siege this, the, the easy should go, right? Oh, I'm nearly done with the siege already. Wow, I didn't even barrage. Go over here, and now we siege the actual big fort. We have a call for peace over here, so I should just be able to peace him out and take all the money. Yes. Very good. The Emperor puts a poke on me now. Oh, I think one more war, and I should actually have enough liberty decide. So I will provoke a few more wars, and then we should be safe, right? <laughs> if you don't know how the Sepoku mechanic works, basically the Emperor can Sepoku you if you declare the war, and he gets some military bonuses and stuff for that. I think he gets some admin points. I'm not 100% sure. I will blend it in. There you go. Here you see it. He can only do it if you're under 50% liberty desire. If we are over 50% liberty desire, you are kind of safe from that. So you kind of try to blob big enough so you can become unloyal, so he can't use that on you anymore. Before that, you keep it safe, taking the lead out of the siege if he gets a pocket so you don't lose disability. So, missions. I can do the first mission. Why haven't I talked about them yet? They're supportive for our nation, but there's nothing you actively need to do to get them, right? Like this here, I have 40 armor tradition. Just get this by fighting wars, and you will anyways. 
So yeah, over here, your subjects must be over 60% loyalty. You will get this if you take supremacy over the crown and just do your mission. So yeah, it gives you one stability. Very nice. I will use this for the three stability. And this you get immediately. Just complete this and have a high income than at the beginning, which you absolutely have. And you get less inflation, more tax income. Just very nice. At the end over here, have two states. You see all of this bind together to my first message. You don't need to know what the missions do in this case. It is just supportive for what we're trying. Incident. I like to start it open. The incidents are in the religious tab over here. And you see the different effects. I like open cause again. Institution emplacement cost and technology cost reduction. Both is very nice. Right now we are on adaptive, which means we get development institution. This is also very good. But basically you see, you can spread it into different levels. And I just like open doors very much. So I'm going to go to open doors. I need new rivals now. So I'm just going to rival the nation surrounding me for easy prestige gain. And I also scornfully insulted the emperor. So he likes me a little bit less. And yeah, I got over liberty this item. If you down size your army stuff like that give some opportunity to just support you so always still calculate with a support group, but by the way i will delete this fort because it just costs money mainly i should be safe now because i will only grow from now on and um, yeah let's actually see a wise a wise i'm still in the green literally <laughs> so yeah that's fine. The best thing about this last conquest is now that I control this crossing over here, which means as long as I control both sides, I don't need naval supremacy anymore. So I can just walk onto the main island as long as I don't lose any side. Still, I will try to have the strongest fleets in my walls because it, it makes the life so much easier. So I will use some of my money to actually build a few galleys. Not over the limit, just, you know, a little bit more. And at the same time, I will... How much loans? I can have 27, yeah. I will shuffle a little bit the loans again. If you don't know what shuffling loans is, basically... Every time you expand and take more land, your loans also increase. I think it's dependent to your development, but I'm not 100% sure there. Maybe someone in the comments knows. Please share your knowledge. So basically, I'm using my new bigger loans to pay off my old smaller loans. I can pay off with one loan I have right now, with the 35 ducats here, three of my old loans. So I have 23 loans now. I'm just paying some of them back. And now I'm sitting at 12 loans. And my limit is 27. So I have a lot of time before I get bankruptcy problems. This is why this dread or this one is way easier. Because as to this point, I have no corruption, right? Like if you if you look the other Japan guide, which was a little bit more experimental. Yeah, <laughs> this time around, it's a lot more stable and still very fast. We, we just had not even 10 years and we took all of that. Now having a little bit of an integration break, we will take the rest later. What I could even do is stop paying the military for a while. And yeah, if you do that though, very important advice, note to myself even, park your troops in to your capital city because you will get no rebellions from here, at least not separatists. You, you don't want to know how often I died to rebels randomly popping up why I haven't paid for my army. I lost the entire stack and got to poker. This hurt so hard that I will never forget this. So please listen to me here. And my catchphrase trust me okay trust me on this one and sometimes i get this asked in the comments i use two mods i use a graphic mod and i use a event picture mod they're both graphical noted like before you say flores you cheat no they're only graphic mods um i'll link them below so yeah they're always linked in the description stuff like this if i use a mod i'll link it in the description be 100 percent sure okay let's just say i know the feel when a mod is used in the video and it's not linked below yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can always count on me doing that. Let me actually reduce autonomy a little bit. Bum, 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 bum. We are actually making positive income now. That's so crazy. I think about my order run now. We're actually making a positive. This is fine. <laughs> We're actually stable. <laughs> and we are just a little bit over the limit. Yeah, like as I said, if you know what you do with this nation, it's such an easier time. I kind of like that with this threat, you can go around to support your stuff because this was the most hurtful stuff, in my opinion. Like my liberty size is pretty nice now. So I'm not afraid of stuff like getting support code anymore, which is just so painful. So yeah, I'm happy that I found a solution for that. I actually listened also to the comments, which suggested something similar. And I have to say this also doesn't work because it's always RNG related. But in most of my test runs, you shouldn't be support code if you expand carefully and you're further away from the emperor and you just increase relations for a while. He should just leave you alone. Second state, which means a cool mission done. Yeah, prestige and legitimacy, plus one, let's go. I'm nearly making a ducat now, I could afford an advisor, that's crazy. <laughs> Maybe I take an admin advisor, it wouldn't be even so stupid. And both are good, uh, stability guy this time around, because I want to increase my stability. At the same time, the inflation guy I think is more needed, because all of the loans inflation will go up. So we'll actually employ an inflation guy. If he ever becomes too expensive, I'll just get rid of him. But for now, he's kind of in the budget. Oh, paying my military fool is only 
Oh yeah, we have half mercs. I totally forgot. Basically, if you have mercs and reduce your army maintenance, you still pay them. Because, you know, they're not the army, they're mercs. So my economy is even better than I thought it would be. With fully paid army. And yeah, we should just melt these rebels thanks to my six shock leader. What I will do now is kill all of the rebels that will pop up and then go into wars again. Basically, I don't want to deal with rebels once I'm at war again, because uh, that's just annoying. So yeah, in this guide, we actually have a small peace period after we conquered all of this down here. Especially on so, because if on so rebels spawn and you can't really deal with them, that's like literally, that's so annoying. Haha, <laughs> word pun. <laughs> Let me just build a few more transport ships, so in case of emergency, I can transport ships on the island. The good thing is the manpower just replenish a lot in the period of peace. Okay, you know what? I, I see a lot of OPMs in one alliance over here, so I'm going to exploit that. Basically, if I declare war on, on Connor and call all of his allies in, it will be a war against four nations, but these four nations are mainly just OPMs. And also he's around, but he's not too strong. So that's also just an easy expansion I can get into. Three provinces. They kind of need to creep up now. Either this or waiting longer, and I don't want to wait that much longer. And I will probably lose some AE while being at war anyway, so it doesn't matter. And most of his armies are coming to my island now anyway, so I'm just gonna just gonna do that. I will very early on engage with his navy now, just to get naval supremacy. Yeah, let's go. Thanks to the AI, i just able to stack wipe them because they're just going very weirdly around this. I will occupy the big nations first because they can have bigger armies and then I will deal with the others later. Just be careful that I don't drop. No, limited design is actually fine now. Even if I lose a little bit of troops, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, we're at the point where our generals are really good. Most of the time the navies don't stack up and just spread over all of Japan because they also have most of the time other wars. Use that to your advantage and just harvest them. <laughs> Could I actually imprison them on my island? Because they can't move out of until they, they siege any of these provinces there. They would just kill them now. They shouldn't be able to flee from my island. Yeah, that's stack wipe. I can always run off the island. So if I lose, it's no problem. But he can't. That's the bonus of naval dominance. Yeah, two armies stack wiped. Easy. Let's go back to the siege now with our navy. And uh, yeah, that's basically the war over, I would say. This time around, I'll actually go more into a little bit of colonial game. How about that? And later on, I will show you a strat where you easily go into America before colonialism pops up. So you actually can get colonialism in Japan, which is a big meme. So let's see if we get it. That would be actually very really fun for the end of the video. Maybe we do. Maybe, maybe we don't. I would love to use this as a tease, but at this point of time, I'm still playing the campaign that I'm recording, so I couldn't actually tell you if I wanted to. <laughs> and funnily enough, we were at war with this nation over here too, and the emperor just annexed them. So that solved that. That solved that. This is apparently also a way to get rid of your enemies. I think I died a natural death, but I died while sieging. Oh no. Oh no, I lost two stability. Yeah, talking about losing points. And we lost an agenda. That's kind of bad. Oh, but we get this amazing mission, so it's all good again. <laughs> Thanks God, I forgot about this because I develop very often here. I will remove it now though, because the edict is not important anymore. Bum. 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 We have three stability now, and we actually have an economy that works. Once again, a mission that gives me money. Okay, but yeah, we actually have our army fully paid, and we make money. I mean, some of that is from looting cities, but it counts, okay? I don't want to hear anything. <laughs> it counts. I make money. As I said, no corruption to this point. Uh, I'm way happier with this guide. It's so good. But if you want to get a bigger picture of how this thread works, you can also watch my order guide. We're going to detail with some other stuff. With this guide, you should be totally fine. But if you want to learn a little bit more about Japan and about some mechanics, maybe watch that guide too. It's a little bit chaotic and you will see way more corruption over there. And if you still dislike the guide, you can still enjoy my suffering. So it's a win-win for you as a viewer. Can I take your province? Yes, yes I can. And no one cares. Why do I want this province? Because now I can declare a war on the biggest nation in the north, which is Usugi. I probably budget the name, but yeah. This allows me to have an easy war up here. I will wait a little bit longer with that so I can kill my rebels. But then I really will take care of the north, sandwich the emperor. This is what I talked about. Imagine this army would not be funded right now. I would be dead. They just para drop on you without you noticing all the time. This time I was just lucky that it's fully paid and an amazing general in it. Otherwise, yeah, I would have had a real problem. Oh no. Huh. Let's regenerate a little bit. That was unfortunate, all of this rebellions popping up into me. I did warn myself about it, and then it still happened. <laughs> ah yes. If I would call something a Flores move in this game, then I would call this a Flores move. Two nations in a coalition, that is actually not too bad. Let's expand. I ended this war over here because my E is going up and I can't annex him anyways. And it will be annexed by his neighbors, so I don't mind this truce existing now. I just want to end this war now. I will wait a little bit longer so the Emperor doesn't hate me anymore. This is like two years. 
but then it should be fine. At this time, actually, I think about taking burger loans because I reached 51 and I don't have that much loans at the moment. So I could actually just turn most of my loans into burger loans and then have a profit again, which sounds crazy as a Japan beginning. But yeah, I have two bank loans and five burger loans, which are basically worth nothing. The two bank loans are very cheap, so I could maybe pay them off very soon and I actually make a good profit now. It's kind of crazy. For most of the time, I'm having such a chaotic start of Japan. This strat actually is quite chill and I'm pretty, really good in time. So that's no problem. I should unite Japan in the next 15 years, something like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is an amazing event. 545, 15 years old. Yeah. So good. Wow. And I got this event before. So that's not something that rarely happens. And I told you he will attack him and he does. So the plan didn't work at all. My four exhaustion is still full. The emperor still hates me. Let's go. Because as soon as I take this, he's like mauling. But I do want this province in this war. It sounds so stupid. I think the right strategy would have just been to give this up and let someone else in exit. But yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to go into the next war now because I don't want to wait for this any longer. And I already have full war exhaustion, so it doesn't matter. He will be called in. He will be called in. That's nice expansion. Wow, I get a good air. The game is like, dies. At least I get a temple, I guess. So, grassland, first battle. Actually, large losses here. What uh, the main reason why I wanted to dodge war exhaustion is if you look over there, not just the siege ability, but 60% core creation cost, that hurts a lot. You know what? Normally I would never do it, but I want to go colonial here. So I'm going to take this so we have an easier time when we want to go colonial because I could already prepare the ideas now. Let's go. Oh my God, this is why I'm f he is a strict leader. This is why I'm fighting so hard against him. This is it. I don't know why I did it, but he killed my rebels. I'm, I'm very thankful for that, man. I, I appreciate it. God, talking about rebels. Finding out he has a strict leader was so eye-opening. Because he screwed me over so often. It is crazy. And then finding out it was not just pure luck. It was actually a stat he had hidden in his leader. Oh my god. But this took me so much money and so much time. Just, oh. I said on my tier list that I find strict can change the outcome of a war. Just taking an advisor that, what is it, a commandant? And I was right. I was so right. I didn't even know how right I was. Because it was so painful to fight him. Just because... This dude is strict. The 5% discipline hurt me so much. They actually stack wiped me over here. It is what it is. Oh my god. Not like if it just didn't have strict, this one would have been so easy. After this, we're just gonna go into the last phase and declare war on everyone. Peace out his friend. Oh, that's how you do it. That way you get more money. Bum. For what we can. And then I will take anything I can from him. It's not overextended. That's very important. Otherwise, I have two problems that I can't deal with. That allows me to get new rivals, which I will absolutely get now. Once again, I will core what we can. As long as the Emperor is not in a coalition, it's fine. Hey, 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 hey. I just saw something. We get the new free company. First war against him. I'm just going to declare war against everyone now. Just as a heads up. Uh, next against him with his ally. Oh, you are alone. Okay. Bomb. Oh, they just got an X. I just wanted to declare war on Oda. And I'm like, I don't want to fight Oda because they have huge military ideas. And yeah, he kind of took that out away from me um, in a good way because I didn't want to deal with that. But now I can officially just declare war against everyone without having any problems. Thanks, Shogun. I mean, really, thanks, Shogun. <laughs> so I just literally need to be at war with everyone. And they're actually already in my capital. I kind of still owe you an explanation, I guess, because of what I just did. Basically, over here, annexing them, started a huge coalition. Potential coalition, I say. And if you are in a coalition and Tempura is also in this coalition, he will declare you and you're basically screwed because all of his subjects will fight against you. I mean, at this point, actually not too scary anymore. But in general, that's scary. What the AI does, though, it calculates which nations would join the war and which wouldn't. And if enough nations join the war, he declares the war. But, and here is the but. Nations you already war with can't join this they can't just eu4 doesn't allow it because i am already with war of them and the ai does count these nations into the decision basically being at war with everyone besides the emperor let the emperor think he's alone <laughs> so it, it is so stupid it is so stupid but it works okay <laughs> For the people who say, hey, Flores, you have some corruption now. If you look over there, it's basically none. And I only get it because of the O extension. This is basically nothing. And you can get rid of it very fast. I'm not afraid of this corruption. I haven't used this button once, which is like a miracle in Japan. But yeah. <laughs> so the time to annex has begun. Nom. This is very close. <laughs> okay, the, the Age of Rebellion has also started. So yeah. I will try to merge my armies and then fight off 
the rest of the rebellions I have here. Oh, this looks so nice now. I love the color of this nation. I don't know if I said this yet, but it, it looks so good. You know what actually good could happen if the Emperor declares war on me now? So basically, that is one of the strats that has been recommended by the comments in my last video. The strat here is, you don't need to lose 3 stability and get a lot of war exhaustion. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> but what I will do now is we'll burn this army to the ground. I will exhaust it as much as I can with killing rebels. And then I will delete it. The Emperor will declare a warn me. Then I will build a huge new Merc stack. And with that Merc stack, I will kill the Emperor. And I will also clean up my nation with all the Mercs that are currently in right. So I will get the Independent or Grand Army for that. Which I can get at this point to just win this war. And the only really thing you need to get is... Uh, Kyoto. Hey, he declared. Amazing. So, now I get the Grand Company. Should be enough. I'll get it over here, close to him. This is actually perfect. This is what I want. I want him to declare on me. Uh, he has a stronger navy. I just saw... No, th these are all the other navies combined. <laughs> these are all the navies from all of these nations. Ah, okay. Interesting. Good. I will give this very strong leader to this army. And, oh my god. I will take the independent Damio for now. It's still good, but the minus 150 governing capacity is very bad. But this war will be very short, and after this we will not be that anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's what I did. He killed Morales for me, and I let it happen. I just parked on top of his army, so I could just get easy stack wipe. Just keep an eye on your rebels here, because if they're about to take over, you need to focus on them. Uh, I will carpet siege him a little bit with my smaller army now, which is still around. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Looming bankrupt. The, the looming bankruptcy basically comes from me having way too much troops. So we'll delete the free company just to get this a little bit down. Will not be a problem after this war anymore, but yeah. Let's see how the rebellions are doing. So let's pray for a fast siege over there and then I can handle these rebel stacks quite easily. Okay, we want to unsiege this. Kill that. Gonna try to clean it off a little bit and then go down south. How close are they to winning? Kind of too close. Peacing all of them out now. Bum, bum, bum. So not only the Emperor is left. Why do we do this? I'm just afraid that all of these nations I'm at war with will become my subjects and the war end. So I'm piecing them out before I take over the Emperor. Just because of that reason. And yeah, I actually have them under control now. But that was, wow, that was really close. Needed to take full concentration here. I haven't commented anything in a year. I was getting rid of all of these rebels before. Like, like I always had to check which one is about to break free and then beeline over there to just kill them. Oh, I will prepare the colonialization stuff because we have still 23 years to get it, which is a lot of time. And yeah, his navy is melting. Risky landing once again, but dealt with. Yeah, five speed battles. Let's go. <laughs> Like, I, I love that we still keep around 3 stability, though. That's the only good side. Korea and Ming will hate me for this. I actually don't care. Let's take it. Bum. And yeah, we are the Emperor now. Let's see. Overextended. See. Well calculated. No problem. We are now the sole ruler of Japan. Year 1480. Basically the same year I did it last time. And now I will show you an easy way to get colonialism into your Japan. At least try to get it, because you, you can't guarantee colonialism. But you will be one of the nations that will be on the list that can get it. First, let's get all of this. We now have Explorer, now we now have Colonist. So with all the things we need, I'm just going to build one light ship. I will integrate my nation a little bit more. I will take the native repressive policy, which is absolutely fine and right. Don't think about it. Going down here, Unified Japan. I love this color, but... This is kind of a how to form Japan guide. So I'll have to go to Japan. And the points to get for this is so good. 300 mana points spread over all of this. We definitely need it. So I'm just going to unite Japan now. I will not take the ideas of Japan. Because I love these ideas so much more. I will plant them in right now. If you're interested what Japan's ideas are. But I like the Shimatsu ideas way more. Okay. Unite Japan. We get some claims. Over here I will go into Eastern bureaucracy. Because if you go colonial. It makes sense to go a little bit into trade. And of course I will rival Korea. So we have a rival. I just noticed we don't have burger loans anymore. So we'll take burger loans to pay off most of this. Then we should actually have a good economy. I could also get rid of the mercs at this point. I have 12 loans. I can have 21. Yeah, easy. Always check that, by the way. Because burger loans can't go over your loan limit. If I would have 19 loans now and my limit is 21, I would only get two burger loans, which is just a waste. So in this case, with having 12 and can up to 21, it's actually fine. Just so you know, these are the th small things in life that made my life hard before I knew them. You always learn the things the hard way, do you? Now pay back all of the nasty big loans. Pretty sure they can't form a coalition as only two nations. I think you need three nations for a coalition. I'm just gonna delete my Merc stack and make money and manpower. 
The best thing about this is, you haven't even noticed it, but while we were expanding, we haven't wasted any points on integrating cultures, because we didn't need to. We expanded so fast after we were prepared that we got it for free. If you form Japan, you become an empire, and if you're an empire, you accept all of the cultures in your culture group. So you don't need to waste 200 dip points. I'm just sharing it, because sometimes I don't show stuff, because it's not interesting, so you don't make the mistake of integrating cultures, even though you don't need to. There's, I think there's a few mechanics that a lot of people just don't know. So I'm repeating myself then and there, I sprinkle some information through my guides. By the way, I have one more cool thing I want to show you later that you probably didn't know uh, that I also learned while doing this guide. If you find them out like, ah, that works. Ah, I love this moment. If you want to see this happening live, as always, feel free to join the streams where I always do my strats. And if you want to know when I stream, join the Discord. I always have a bot that streams out when a new video comes out, when I'm live and with an amazing community. And I'm planning to doing Friday MPs. So if you want to join Friday MPs, EU4, Crusader Kings, Hoi4, basically in the paradox spectrum, feel free to join that. So I fabricated claims on him. And I think this also counts part of Japan. So let's go in. Had a small period of peace, killed most of my rebels, integrated most of my land. Ten years later, we look way better already. It's not all statified, but most of it is caught. I also started to explore the region a little bit basically if you don't know the condition of colonialism spawning in your nation you can always check it up over here if you hover over the start date you see the conditions and we have everything except the year and a province in the new world basically we need just one province and i don't even think it needs to be fully colonialized just a province in the new world so my plan is reaching alaska how we will do that i will show you after we took this what i will take here is monthly autonomy change because i don't have no other cultures i can accept at the moment i can change this later but for now this is very much needed uh, one cool thing I still want to show off, because I promised it, is something about states and autonomy. It's just a neat thing to know. At this territory, I decrease autonomy, which it decreases it by 25%, right? So, 25%. But it is a territory, so it's kept at 50%. Uh, you might think I wasted this click now because I should have waited until I made it into a state. But I think a lot of people don't notice. If I turn it into a state now and I let one tick pass, it goes down. Actually, there you go. goes down the rest of the autonomy. The 25% decrease is still in the background, but it's kept at 50 You can just decrease autonomy with provinces that you haven't turned into states yet. And it's no problem for later on. In the background, it still ticks down. Just a neat thing to show off with this territory here, right? Another thing, people ask me how it works. If you're in the macro builder and you click shift when you selected the units and left click on a province you build five of that type once again something that i just want to share because i'm building up my army now and um people did ask me how i did that there you go shift plus left click five of one type everything is being caught now i try to oh i can actually claim this okay good if you have these islands you can claim this up here i am declared a war now bringing over i think i built so many transport ships that i very easily should just be able to transport my whole army in one go no it's half okay okay taking this now they actually have a fort here which is very annoying being careful with the navy because they are getting a lot of attrition here i will start to convert this now and i will actually put the edict in for faster conversion speed because it's actually a mission to convert the north here hey no more overextension look at that for a second at least because i'm gonna take that <laughs> so what i could have done by the way and i'm just didn't do it because it will not continue this campaign while all of this is going on you already have a colonialist you could start to colonialize taiwan just be careful that china will get claims on this and they will declare wars for this so be prepared and have a big enough navy fight off the landings right because they will do that so one last thing i'm going to do now is to know to be for that it, it seems very stupid i know but we need this for the colonial range over here it doesn't quite work out with that i tried so one last time no cb war i can't have a florious guide without an ocb war <laughs> and i will take the colonial range here we have to wait for this core now otherwise i can't quarter province in the north okay interesting we sieged it too fast never happened to me before i don't know if you noticed this is one of those funny facts again the eu4 map officially ends here this is why this is a straight line map wise you even see down here that the map kind of ends here sometimes you have this camera pack if you're playing a nation in asia and want to go to your colonies that your camera chooses to go left instead of just you know doing this they go all the way over here that's because the map ends here and yeah it's stupid but <laughs> i had this bug so often and once i found out why this it's still so stupid <laughs> this is done now i can core this i'm gonna explore the northeast pacific and i will also start to core this the siberian japanese colonies yep they are in the lore now once again i will check because of autonomy i will decrease all of that just for money reasons you should always try to keep your autonomy low and now that you have the money and the manpower to actually take care of your rebels this should be fine money wise do we look good 
seven. Oh, nearly eight ducats. No, that's very good. Oh, no. It's a cool event picture from this mod, though. But still. Oh, no. Why do you drink alcohol? POV, me to myself. What I want to do now is to boost my capital so we try to get the other institution here. Because I would love to get Renaissance 2, right? So I will pump all of my points into here so we get Renaissance. I just lost my advisor here. Oh, my God. By the way, admin focus. I don't need you anymore. Can I get him again? Yeah, cheaper. Okay, I need to take a load. I'm on a clock. Chop, chop. Okay, I can reach this now. And this officially is New World Land. So we officially now have a colony in a new world and qualify for colonialism. Is this stupid? Yes. Does it work? Yes. This is actually really hard of to Japan to get this far. Not gonna lie. I, I had th this figuring this out took me a while. Uh, I tried it the normal way. I just didn't reach it. This way, it actually works. And guys, uh, look away for a second. Thank you very much. Nothing happened. Yeah, without the native repression policy, this would take forever. So my brave explorers are now exploring Alaska. I can totally imagine the Japanese seeing Alaska and thinking like, Oh yeah, we kind of totally colonialized this very rich and <laughs> bountiful land. Later on, we all know the Japanese sold it to the Americans. Navy doctrine wise, I urge you to get the merchant navy doctrine because you will be a trade nation, especially if you go colonial. At the end of the day, if you go into China, if you go into Korea, you can take over the Beijing trade node and still make a lot of money with just having ships there, right? It's about to become interesting because it is a month away from 1500. And let's double check if we qualify. And yeah, we qualify. We have everything. The only thing missing is the year. So it's official now. It's enough to just have a colony that is currently being made. No, but it's about to be interesting. Do we get it? Do we get colonialism? Does colonialism spawn in Japan? <gasps> oh! It does! Oh my god, this is so funny! Okay, that is... <laughs> okay, the Europeans are gonna be mad about that. <laughs> Colonialism in Japan. We get a lot of bonuses. We get trade bonuses. This is beautiful. And the Europeans are cut off from colonialism, which means their tech is going to be expensive now. If I get Renaissance now, which I'm currently still working on over here, we will be the head of technology. With Renaissance now being present and colonialism being present too, I would say this is a good point to end this. I hope you like the guide. And if you did, maybe leave a like on the video or subscribe to the channel. If nothing more to add, have a good day. Yo!